Hey guys, it's Ryan. In this video, we're going to continue talking about oral pathology and specifically begin our discussion on mucosal lesions. So in this video, we're going to talk specifically about reactive lesions. This is uh, referring to physical and chemical injury to oral mucosa. So again, I'm going to be talking about just the highest yield, most important info, mostly geared towards the National Board Dental Exam Part 2. So first we have linea alba. Um, this literally translates to white line, and it refers to a white line on the buccal mucosa, and that's where the um, plane of occlusion would be, where these the upper and lower teeth would meet. So if you're biting your cheeks, this is sort of like a callus that would form on your buccal mucosa. So it's a type of focal hyperkeratosis, which basically means a callus due to chronic friction on this area of the uh, buccal mucosa. Next we have traumatic ulcer, which is very common. Um, and it's important to distinguish between erosion and ulcer. Erosion is an incomplete break, whereas an ulcer is a complete break through epithelium. So whereas an erosion is only in the mucosal layer, an ulcer goes into the submucosal layer. It explains why they're typically much more painful and noticeable. A chemical burn um, could be by any of these um, compounds, aspirin, hydrogen peroxide, silver nitrate, and phenol. Um, typically aspirin is something um, that a test maker might ask about causing this sort of whitish um, sloughing appearance of the tissue. Next we have nicotine stomatitis, um, and these are red dots which are inflamed salivary duct openings. So that's something that's very common on uh, the exam to be asked, that these specifically red dots are inflamed minor salivary duct openings on the hard palate. This is only pre-malignant if related to reverse smoking, which is when the lighted end is in the mouth during smoking. But this is something that's common in a more chronic um, heavy smoker. Amalgam tattoo is the traumatic implantation of amalgam particles into mucosa. So you can see them clinically as well as radiographically. In this case, they're pretty uh, prominent. And this would be if you were um, condensing amalgam and some of the particles um, leaked out of the matrix band or were floating around and they weren't rinsed out and they're kind of um, pounded in there after a certain amount of time, they can sort of implant themselves as tattoos. Now in a radiograph, they kind of look like these floating particles where um, the gums are. And so that's something that is um, typically can confirm something that you see clinically and you can confirm radiographically, oh, those are amalgam particles. Uh, this isn't something that we need to biopsy or uh, think more about. This is um, completely benign and within normal. Next, we have smoking associated melanosis. And this is because chemicals in tobacco stimulate the melanocytes to deposit uh, melanin in the mucosa, making them appear darker. These are brown, diffuse, irregular macules, typically seen in anterior gingiva. Um, this could be um, reversible if smoking is discontinued. Uh, it can also be related to uh, smokeless tobacco, which is uh, frequently deposited in this area of the mouth. Next, we have a melanotic macule. Uh, this is basically a benign hyperpigmentation in the mucous membrane. So basically, you can think of it like a freckle of mucosa. Now we have another syndrome, which if you watched my previous video, I'll always bold syndromes and list them as sort of a mathematical equation, a sum of some certain um, characteristics that when added together equal the syndrome. So this one um, involves these uh, freckles, uh, melanotic macules of the face, could also be the lips, and especially inside the mouth, and intestinal polyps. So one way to remember this is um, think of um, somebody um, who is home sick from school and they're wearing their PJs, 
where we get PJ syndrome and they have a bunch of uh, spots all over their face. They have a bunch of freckles and they're having some intestinal distress. So if you think of somebody in their PJs with freckles and intestinal distress, maybe that'll help you remember the syndrome a little bit better. Next we have hairy tongue. Um, and all you need to know about this is that they're elongated filiform papillae. So we know we have different kinds of papillae. This is referring to elongation of the filiform type. Next we have denophorus associated sloughing. Denophorus, another name for toothpaste. This is related to a surfactant ingredient, sodium lauryl sulfate. It's an important um, name to remember. This compound can often cause this sort of white sloughing appearance of mucosa. So for a patient like this, you can suggest Toms of Maine or Rembrandt. They're both uh, brands of toothpaste that do not contain this surfactant ingredient. And lastly, we'll talk a little bit about submucosal hemorrhage. So all of these are extravascular lesions that do not blanch. So a little bit about blanching. Basically, um, if they're, the blood is out of the vessels into the tissues, they will not blanch. So think of water in a water balloon. If you squeeze the balloon, you can kind of move the water around a little bit. But as soon as water spills out of the balloon, you can't really move it around the same way. The same thing with blanching. If blood is in the vessels, you can move it around and make the tissues pale by holding pressure over it. But as soon as blood is extravasated into tissues, you can't do this any longer. So uh, we can think of it in terms of extravascular and vascular lesions. So vascular lesions like hemangiomas, which we talked about in the previous video, and tele telangiectasias, which we'll talk about in a future video, do blanch on a diascopy test, which is basically what I was talking about, putting pressure on these areas to see if they the tissues go pale after a little bit. So submucosal hemorrhage is basically broken up into these four categories based um, on size. So petechiae are the smallest at about one millimeter. Um, purpuras are slightly larger. Echimosis is basically like a bruise that's about one centimeter, maybe two centimeters in diameter. And hematoma is a larger mass of blood that is leaked out into tissue. Um, and it's often caused by trauma to oral mucosa, like with an anesthetic needle. Uh, if you're doing a PSA block, that's a common area where you'd see a hematoma form. And treatment for this is none. Um, just eliminate the cause if possible. And that's it, guys. So um, hope you enjoyed the video. Leave a like and subscribe to my channel for more oral pathology and other things dentistry. As always, thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys next time.